This is a practice. This is a practice. We're not used to setting boundaries. So just being really clear with ourselves that this is a practice. And so just as a general guideline for setting boundaries is really just kind of three steps. First, pause. When someone's asking you to do something, when someone's speaking to you in a way that's not consistent with your terms of engagement, just take a pause. It's okay. Like we don't always have to respond immediately. And in fact, it's always good that pause is indicating we're not operating from the ego. The ego wants to push back right away. And often, cutting our nose to spite our face, or just, you know, oh, getting all tense and, oh, I can't believe this is going to happen. Pause. Breathe into your heart center. Just take a couple breaths. Remember your terms of engagement. I promise you that is so empowering when you know it's on there. Just it's oh, it's on the list. That's right. You breathed. You took a pause. And then very slowly and with kindness, because the more slowly we speak, like in this situation, right, the less, you know, tense we are, it's just very slowly. Like, I so appreciate being invited. Thank you so much. I just don't go out at night. Or I so appreciate being invited. Thank you. But I'm just trying to have more space in my schedule. I so appreciate you including me today. I just know that it's going to be too hot out and it's just not going to work for me. But I hope you'll think of me next time. It's for you. I think Monica, was it Monica that had that on the boat? Um, so, you know, it's okay to, to just pause, breathe, remember your terms of engagement, speak slowly with kindness, right? And when it is over, and this is a really, really important part, when it is over, when you walk away, or just even you're still engaged in the conversation in some way, stay in your heart, keep breathing into your heart, because this is where you're going to want to start second guessing yourself. What did they think? Did I say that? Okay. Were they offended? That's not your business. Not right now. Just breathe. Breathe into your heart center. That I'm telling you, this is where the courage is. It's not in our ego. It's not in our pushing back. This is where the courage is. And it's all, you know, you might set the boundary, but that temptation afterwards is to want to evaluate it. Don't. Because that evaluation is going to be done through an unkind lens and is probably going to prevent you from doing it again. That doesn't mean that there's not a time later to reflect on it, giving it a little bit of space, right? So that there's a little bit of distance, you're feeling centered, maybe you do a little bit of a heart-centered meditation, and then to say, okay, what did I do well? What could I have done better for next time? A little reflection is healthy, that's okay. But we've got to be really careful of that stickiness of the ego wanting to come in afterwards. I can't believe you said it like that. What are they thinking of you right now? We know all the little bad arguments that the ego is going to be making. So you need to come into your heart. Know whatever the ego is saying is not good advice. It's not good advice. Come into your heart. Find that courage. Find that strength again remembering I did what was right for me. It may not have come out perfect the first time. It may not have been as eloquent as I would have liked, but I did it. I did it. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this because this is important to my peace of mind. So just, you know, try your best, um, do your best. Try not to apologize. Given the situation, just try not to be too like apologetic about it. It's okay if it's a friend and you're saying like your friend with the boat and you're just saying like, oh, you know, I would love nothing more than to be with you. But I got to be honest, it's so hot and I just know I'm going to be miserable, right? Like it's okay sometimes to give an excuse. Um, it's not, or give a reason, sorry. But just being very careful with kind of that, that way in which we, meekly, you know, meekly and weakly set a boundary like, oh, you know, I, um, I'm so sorry, and I hope it's okay. And, you know, I'm just not going to do it this time. And we're kind of wishy washy in the way that we're doing in the way that we're, we're, we're saying no. Breathe, 
It's on the terms of engagement. You're, you're, this saying no is protecting something that's important to you. What's most important to you? Breathe into your heart. Very slowly speak. Be confident, right? You're protecting what's most important. So, you know, use your judgment. It's okay if you need to say like, hey, sorry, friend, I can't do it right now, but maybe later or something like, um, but just be careful of getting a little too, um, we're using a little too many excuses in there. And so I also have listed, and this is in the PDF, just some examples for you, because it does help to have some examples of, of phrases that you might use. So if you're being invited to a social engagement, and I do always start with this, and I, because it is important and it really is true. So make sure whatever you say rings true. And where I'll say, I so appreciate you including me, right? So I always start with that because I do appreciate being included and I think it makes them feel good as well. Like I really do appreciate this. And you can say things then, but let me check my schedule and get back to you, right? You might, you might be more in the ambivert category and you're like, oh, I just need to, I really do need to check my schedule. I need to, because I can't trust myself sometimes to overbook or, um, or just you do feel you need that little bit of space. You're just not quite ready to say no yet, but maybe you just want to start with learning how to say, let me check my schedule and get back to you. This next one, I really, in fact, these, these next couple, I really, really like, and I cannot tell you how often people say, me too. The one that's even inviting you. So where you might say, I so appreciate you including me, but I'm really cutting back on making any new plans right now. Or I'm really trying to slow down and have as few plans as possible on my calendar. I cannot tell you the number of people that will say, oh my God, me too. And yet here they are making more plans because everyone's just kind of caught up in this, not even stopping and thinking about whether this is feeling good, whether they're balanced, um, whether they're at peace or not, right? And people are like, yes, you're right. I want to stop, put I, I want to stop putting so many plans on my schedule as well. Um, you might even say, I so appreciate you including me, but I just like to keep my evenings quiet, right? I just like to keep my evenings quiet. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. And it's a good example for people to hear this. We don't have enough role models of people saying this. And I, I know years ago, I had done this for someone. In fact, it was at the start of one of our my meditation class. And someone had come up and asked me to do something. And I said something just along those lines. And, uh, and then another woman came up afterwards and she said, I really appreciated hearing you say that <laughs> because I don't like, you know, I like to keep my evenings quiet too. And just to see how it was handled. And, um, and then it wasn't maybe a couple of years after that that I started doing the workshop because more and more people were saying, like, how do you do that? Like, how do you tell people this? And, and as I said, most times people are pretty receptive. Most times people are pretty good. If you're in a hurry, you can say, and, and I do think this is important. If, it is, if, it, if you're in a hurry and it really is someone that you, you would normally speak to, but you've just popped in the store real quick, to just say, instead of getting all tense and all these excuses, just say, hey, I am in a hurry right now, but I just hope you know how important you are to me and I'm going to check in with you later today, right? Because sometimes we get a little bit, when we're in that rush, we kind of, it, it just doesn't come out right. And again, it's just important for us to be able to be able to speak if we're even in a hurry, but to keep moving. And maybe it's not someone that you want to engage with much, but you're in a hurry. And just to say like, hey, it was great to see you. I'm so sorry. I got to run. And as you run, like not giving them 10 excuses, you come into your heart, right? It's okay to be in a hurry sometimes. It's okay. All right. And good for you, Olga. Yeah. Just if it's something that's not aligned, it's not aligned. Yeah. It's about living your life true to yourself. If you're living your life true to yourself, if you're being more peaceful, more balanced, I think the way we communicate this is most often with a lot of kindness and compassion. Not everyone's going to appreciate it, but most people will. And I do think in communicating our needs, I think it is important. I'll just say a couple of these and you guys can go through the rest of them because there's probably just one or two things I want to mention. Um, and in the interest of your time, we'll, we'll get close to the end here. In saying to people, if someone's, like I'll just give you some examples. 
I know it's not your intention to ignore me. But when you look at your phone, I feel hurt. And I feel like there's some distance between us. You know, or I know it's not your intention to cut me off. But when you do that, it hurts. And I feel like there's a wedge coming between us. And that's not what I want. Right? It's always good to kind of even say when someone's talking down to us or someone's cutting us off or again, looking at their phone or being disparaging. I really do. And I've only had to do it a couple of times, but to say like, it is creating a wedge in our friendship. Like I, that is the consequence of this behavior. And I'm letting you know it is creating a wedge, right? And I think when people understand that they go, oh my God. In fact, it was, in fact, the two times that I am thinking about it, when it's happened, it was just like, oh my God, that's not at all what I meant. I I know, I know that wasn't your intention. That's why I'm letting you know, letting you know. Yeah. And if people, as you're saying, Olga, keep inviting you to things they know you're not interested in. Well, I mean, we don't really know what their motivation is, but our setting boundaries and our saying things, even if we're saying something, and I've had this where people go, but come on, it's just one night and everyone's going and they just really, really, really want to try and get you to go. You know, and you can feel like the ego wanting to come back in. It's just like, I so appreciate it. I do want you to know I so appreciate it. I just don't go out in the evening. I just, so, I, you know, I just don't do it. Oh, well, come on, come on, come on. I just don't go out. And the more spacious that we are, the more that we can breathe into our hearts, feeling okay, not getting them to also, they've got to get this through their head. Just, I just have to maybe say this a couple more times. And then it might be like, okay, you know, I'm not going out in the evening. <laughs> I got to go now, right? So, and even just, you know, topics you don't want to discuss, just to say to people, I prefer not to discuss this topic, right? Let's talk about something else. I want to know how you're doing. Right. Or again, if people are gossiping, and I love this, someone brought this up on a a workshop once. You might say to them, have you discussed this with them? That's kind of a good way of getting people to wake up and go, well, no. Well, then why are you discussing it with me? I don't, I, you know, I've had a good experience with this person and I don't want to talk about them. It doesn't feel good talking about others. I don't know what's going on in their world. How am I to judge them? Right? It's important for us to be able to speak up around gossip because gossip is a little too too widely accepted. Um, and so and there's a couple more phrases there in the PDF. And then just boundaries around 24/7 availability on technology, right? You know, my phone is permanently on do not disturb. I do not get notifications. And I think someone else had said this back there. You don't have to respond right away. Nobody has to respond right away. I mean, if it's something earth shattering, life, you know, yes. But um, you don't have to respond right away. This is about us being clear about how we're communicating with the world. And then understanding also when there is a toxic relationship. Yeah. Oh, so Monica, yeah, a male friend constantly saying inappropriate sexual things. Like, you've got to say something about that. You've got to say something. I had to say that recently to a friend down here. And they're very, they're very flirtatious. That's kind of, kind of part of the Latin America thing. But I had to say to him, I'm like, that's just not appropriate. I don't, I don't like that. I know you think you're being complimentary, but it doesn't align with my values. You know, I live a very, I don't date. I live a life of, you know, in that respect, like a nun. And it doesn't feel appropriate to me. And he took it so well. And he even did say, because look, I value our friendship and I don't ever want to do anything to disrupt that. Um, And then if, but yeah, if you say it over and over and they just stop, if they don't stop doing it, then okay, this person isn't respecting you, right? They're not respecting you. That's not a friendship if they're not respecting you. I'd said this last week with a client not too long back, I had to say something and he took it very badly and that relationship, you know, and I was like, fine, but it wasn't appropriate. It wasn't appropriate. And I don't feel any, I don't feel badly for speaking up. Yeah, exactly. You don't miss it. Yeah. So signs of a toxic relationship, you know, you know, 
when you feel drained around someone, someone's calling in and you see their phone, you know, maybe you happen to see it at the time you're on your phone and so you see it and you just dread seeing it or you see their message, you dread it. You, you never initiate invitations to them. Um, you know they're maybe critical of you. You feel like they're judging you. Like we know when a relationship is toxic. We, we really do know. These are just some of the telltale signs, but we know when they are. And loyalty, and I put this down here again because I just think so many times we always think, no, I've got to be loyal. It's family or it's this person. I've been known them for so long. If the relationship has turned toxic, then it's time for the relationship to end. And come into our heart, meditate, get some good advice, feel good about making the decision, right? Feel empowered, feel courageous, feel strong. You might need to do a loving kindness meditation. You might need to do something a little bit longer. And then evaluate how you're going to end this relationship because it needs to end. If it's a toxic relationship, it needs to end. I mean, sometimes there can just be a natural, like you just, every time they reach out, you just, hey, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can just think, you know what, I just think I can kind of just let this fall, you know, just kind of a little bit more space, a little more distance, and it can kind of just end naturally by not engaging. They reach out and you're just, hey, busy, sorry, can't get together. Sometimes it can work like that. You might find that you want to write a letter or an email or you want to say it in person, right? I mean, I've written a letter to someone once. And um, and I do want to say also we have to be really careful with people that exhibit narcissistic behavior uh, because they do not respond well. And those are usually very toxic relationships. Writing a letter is usually the best way to do it because they're just going to get combative turn it on you. And, you know, it was just I had to write out like, this is where we are in the relationship. And it just doesn't, it, it, it was, I was feeling like he was really manipulating me. And he didn't take it well at first. And then he came around eventually. And, and our relationship isn't anywhere close to what it used to be. Once or twice a year, he'll say hi. And it's like, okay, fine. I used to work with him at the hedge fund that I worked at. And, um, but it's just not the same, not the same. And, and good, because I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be where it was. But what I think is important is that we do have to acknowledge we have to end a toxic relationship. And I think a letter or an email is, is fine to do it that way. It's pretty hard to do something like that in person. But if we can write down a letter, come into our hearts, feel very centered, just write down, you know, write a letter explaining like this just isn't working. I don't have any ill will towards you. I don't have any anger. I wish nothing but the best for you, but this isn't a healthy relationship. You know, with all my best, Meredith. All right? And then to really make sure that we do hold them in our hearts, that we don't uh, judge them, that we recognize the relationship wasn't healthy. It was time for it to end. All right? The, the afterwards is the important part there. When we set a boundary, particularly in a situation like a toxic relationship, or in a relationship where you kept asking them to not speak to you in a certain way or not to do something, and then eventually you decided, okay, the relationship is over. Keep coming into your heart, holding them in your heart. Otherwise, you're still in the prison. You're still in the prison. So coming into your heart, they're who they are, their causes and conditions. I did what was right for me. And I feel good. And I feel good. Yeah, and I'll just add from Alice, codependent people can be very draining, yes. I think they're helpful or trying to fix you or tell you what you need. Yeah, codependent is, is not healthy. And people that, again, are exhibiting narcissistic behavior, and I always say narcissistic behavior, Not I don't ever want to label someone as something. They're not one thing. Uh, and it is a behavior, and it can sh and it can be very manipulative behavior. And once we've identified it, and once we have identified it, then it's time to end the relationship. Yeah. So also just to remember, and this in the PDF, this is what I've kind of deemed like our inner circle of friends. We can have about four to five close friendships. Out here is all the rest of our friends, and then out here is acquaintances, right? Not everyone gets treated the same way. Right, everyone gets treated with kindness and respect and honesty, of course. But again, the way people will, you've met someone once or twice and they're like, hey, we should get together or we should go do this or, uh, you know, or, or they're popping in all the time, right? 
they're taking time away from the close relationships that you do want to nurture. And, and sometimes we just think because someone asked me, and even they're just an acquaintance, you just met them, right? You don't have to treat them. You don't have to engage with them in the way that you would your best friend or your close friend. So I think it is important for us to understand this. It's not natural the number of people that we know today. Um, you know, some of us can have really wide circles of friends, a lot of acquaintances, and an acquaintance is different than a friend. And a close friend, your inner circle is different than just a friend of one of the many people that you know. And it's important to, to be able to distinguish that. And I just have um, a note in here, when someone is setting a boundary with you, because sometimes people are setting boundaries with us as well. And it's, it's good for us to hear them, to come into our hearts, right? Because it can feel a little bit hurtful. And it's also really good for us to thank them. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. I do value this relationship. And I so appreciate you letting me know that. So people will sometimes set boundaries with us as well. And it's important that we handle it graciously. So, um, you know, also, I will put a few more comments in there as well. Like, again, you know, come into your heart if it hurts. Breathe and feel. And remember, you know, you come into your heart because your ego is going to go, oh, I can't believe that. Was I acting like this? I'm such an idiot. Your heart's going to say, they value you enough to tell you. And yeah, maybe you were talking about that a little bit too much, COVID or political or complaining or something, right? And you go, thank you for telling me. Because yeah, I don't want to be the complainer. Maybe I wasn't aware of it, right? So it's good to know. Final notes. Final notes. Uh, not everyone's going to appreciate setting boundaries with them. That's okay. Expect that. Not everyone will. The overwhelming majority will. Not everyone will. Most people will really respect it. This is a practice. This is a practice. Find your favorite say phrases and say them. Stand in the mirror and say them. Practice, right? Practice saying them. And sometimes it's two steps forward and, and one step back, and that's okay, right? But you keep coming back and recognizing this is a practice. If you were learning to ride the horse and you get thrown off the horse, what do you do? You get back on the horse, right? This is a practice. And what we are protecting here is the way we want to live our lives, the way we want to engage with people, peace of mind, balance, our own emotional well-being, and having healthy relationships. It is worth it. Know that it's not always going to come out great. Learn from those situations, right? Learn from them. Make some notes, practice again, and just know this is a Sometimes two steps forward, three steps back, right? That's okay. It's a practice. And just to remember again, this is very much an attitude, very much an attitude. Instead of thinking, oh, God, I've got to set a boundary with that person later. Oh, I can't believe I have to do this again. Ego pushing back. It's, I'm going to have another opportunity to set a boundary. And it feels so good. It feels so good to feel empowered, being able to protect the life that we want to live, to nurture the life that we want to live, to have more balance, to have more peace, and to make sure that the relationships that we have are really healthy and, and good for us. Uh, so it's a little bit of uh, discomfort the first few times that you, that you set a boundary with someone, and then you just get better at it and you get better at it. And it just starts to become second nature. But it is a practice, so keep practicing. Just keep practicing. It's such an important part of our, of our lives, definitely for those of us on a spiritual path, but really for everyone. Everyone needs to be setting more boundaries. And if you feel you need to set boundaries with yourself, add some more things onto the terms of engagement of where you feel you need some more boundaries with yourself. And um, just keep reviewing the document. It's a living document, but it is the guardrail that keeps you living a more peaceful life and living a life that's true to yourself. That's worth, that's worth it, right? So I thank you all 
for all of your great comments, for all of the hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.